plans to bring together different factions of the Labour Party since he took over. Tonight Newsnight reveals the depth of planning at the heart of Labour's largest affiliate union and paymaster Unite to challenge established Labour MPs. We've seen emails sent for the attention of one of the top candidates to take over the union from Len McCluskey, talking about methods to unseat candidates at the last election perceived to be on the right of the Labour movement. In a moment, we'll be speaking to the intended recipient of those emails who insist they were never acted on. Our political editor, Nick Watt, has the story. A movement founded with the highest of ideals. A movement always bedeviled by profound differences. And in recent years, a movement laid low by bitter divisions. It's the honour of my lifetime to lead this great movement. A new era now with a leader pledged to restore unity. But as Keir Starmer experiences a tough period, divisions are bursting into the open. Foul play comes the cry from adversaries of the left as Newsnight sees evidence of the depth of planning on the left to challenge established Labour figures. I think up and down the country there were attempts to destabilise Labour MPs, to get rid of them. I think if people had known that these conversations were taking place when they were taking place, there would have been real shock. I think even Jeremy Corbyn would have uh, condemned that kind of behaviour. Hold your horses, says a new MP from the left. The Labour Party is nothing without its trade unions. Uh, we were born from the trade unions. Uh, we remain a, a, a party of working people, working class people. And as such, I think our unions' influence and involvement in our structures is, is not only proper, but imperative for us to continue. A new flare-up of old embers after Newsnight saw emails by a West Midland Unite activist outlining plans to try and unseat leading Labour figures. In an email dated the 12th of February 2018, addressed to a senior Unite official, Howard Beckett, the activist Steve Price outlined plans to influence the selection of councillors and to put the skids under the former minister John Speller and Tom Watson, who was then Labour's deputy leader. Newsnight has also seen internal Unite emails in which officials discuss Mr Price's first email. One said that one hour may not be enough time to deal with all the issues he had raised. In a second email on the 15th of March 2018, addressed to Howard Beckett, Steve Price wrote of how his networking was vital in building up trusted left routes in 59 constituencies. Finally, Steve Price wrote that it had been agreed that he would be paid, but he needed a form of words to describe what he was, wait for it, not doing. In a statement to Newsnight, Unite mounted a strong defence of a union's right to pursue its political agenda, said that Steve Price's plan was not accepted by the union and insisted that no payments were made. A Unite spokesperson said, it is a long-established practice across the entire trade union movement to fund candidates who stand on a platform that will advance the lives of our members. This is not unique to Unite. There is absolutely nothing inappropriate with either Unite or any third party providing clean and transparent funding for political activity. But a nemesis of the left says they are choosing the wrong target. It's outrageous that at a time when all our focus should have been on uh, defeating the Conservative government in the interests of the people whom we're elected to represent, that the Unite, our biggest union, that there was a discussion going on about how to undermine sitting MPs and get rid of them in something like 59 constituencies, that there was a discussion about getting rid of councillors who didn't meet the political agenda of the few people at the top of Unite. There was a discussion about sacking key officials at the Labour Party, the General Secretary and uh, the official in charge of looking at anti-Semitic complaints. And there was a discussion about placing people in seats when uh, MPs were retiring or those seats were seen as marginal. It is appalling to envisage that all that was going on when we were all trying to defeat the Conservative government and as a trade union, never has it been more important for them to do their day job which is to defend their members' interests 
against all the changes that come from the gig economy, from insecure labour and from the challenge to employment rights. Steve Price has not responded to a request from Newsnight for a comment. A brief foray back into the political world for Labour's former deputy leader to issue a warning. Well, the problem, I think, for the Labour Party is, whilst United car carries on with its own internal politics and plays these hard left games and appeals to its narrow audience, that plays very badly with mainstream voters on the doorstep. And we're getting to the point where the behaviour of some of the Unite candidates is actually going to impact on the electoral outcome when the general election happens. Keir Starmer can't afford to let that happen. I've absolutely no doubt that Keir Starmer could face these people down. In fact, he's already shown that he can do that. Um, but why make his job harder than it already is? That's the point I'm trying to make. A Labour MP who supports Unite defends its approach. Unite's politics are clear, and I think that's important too. There's nothing worse than an organisation whose politics are not clear. People don't trust said organisation. Their members give them a mandate and they act on said mandate. That's, that's key. But I think it's completely unfair that this idea that Unite are not focused on, on you know, attacking the government for their disgraceful policies is completely wrong. If we look at what Unite and our other trade unions have been doing throughout the entire pandemic to make sure that workers have had the support that they've had, that is very clear. The language can be milder these days, but it doesn't take long to find wholly opposing world viewpoints within the Labour Party. This is still a deeply divided and traumatised movement after its worst electoral defeat since the era of the Depression in the 1930s. Keir Starmer believes he can chart a way back to number 10 with a united movement. History would teach him that unity is vital for success. The present would suggest that achieving that is still a tall order. A festival feel with Unite an ever-present force at rallies of the left. Rather different sentiments in other parts of the Labour movement today, where opposing sides are still dug into their respective trenches. Let's now speak to the intended recipient of those emails, Howard Beckett, who's the Assistant General Secretary at the Union Unite, and a candidate to replace Len McCluskey in the General Secretary election for that union. And I'll be speaking shortly to the Labour MP, Siobhan McDonough. She served as a minister under Gordon Brown and was part of the new Labour generation that helped sweep Labour to power in 97. Uh, Howard Beckett, though, to begin with you, those emails were sent for your attention by Steve Price, one looking to, quote, remove right-winger, Wingers put the skids under Speller and Watson and Steve Price alleges you had agreed for payment for this through a third party. Well, good evening, Emma. Thank you for having me on. Yes, uh, Steve made a proposal to me and I decided to go in a different direction. There was nothing wrong with the proposal that Steve made. The idea that t Tom Watson is shocked by this uh, is quite extraordinary. But uh, I decided to go in a different direction, including our political officers. So, no, the arrangement never was for formalised with Steve. Uh, but as I say, there's certainly nothing wrong with the suggestions that was made in his email. Uh, uh, you say n never formalised, you went in a different direction. But it is very odd language. For instance, can you explain what's going on here? I need a form of words to describe what I am not doing. If there's nothing wrong with that, why does he need a form of words to describe what he isn't doing? No idea, Emma. I have no idea why Steve chose that language is over three years ago. But obviously, Steve was is an activist in the West Midlands, a good activist. He obviously had ideas in his own mind as to how he could generate activism around the West Midlands, and he wanted some financial remuneration with it. I decided in the end that I would go with our political officers, and I wanted to see that activism that Steve talked about organically grow rather than have a fiduciary relationship. But there was nothing wrong with but Steve's suggestions at all, and there was nothing shocking about it. There have been replies to him, obviously, because these are a couple of emails, and he, he says, I think we agreed you would arrange payment. That's what he talks about there. So did he, did he get that from thin air? Is he making that up? We did approach him for comment. Well, he didn't get a reply from me. I'm, I'm sure whoever has decided to leak these uh, these emails to yourselves would have leaked a, a reply from me if there had been one. No, no, I'm uh, sorry. I, no, forgive I... me. I didn't mean that. What I meant was he was talking in this email. He'd obviously had a reply from someone about the fact that you had suggested payment. 
Yes, and he, he hasn't had a reply from me. As I say, if, if there was an email or a reply from me, I'm sure it would have been leaked to you. I, mean, I don't know why Steve chose his language. It's over three years ago. I'm sure he was keen to try and jog on the discussion as quickly as possible for uh, for fiduciary re uh, reasons, but it never came to a conclusion. There was no payments made. I chose to go in a different direction, but we should be very clear. What Steve was proposing was legitimate. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. It was just that I decided not to go with it. But it's, Sorry, when you say it's legitimate, I mean, Margaret Hodge has now raised the matter with the police, concerned about third party payments and potential criminal activity. What do you make of that? Laughable, uh, risable. Uh, the idea of Margaret Hodge complaining about the police. I, I listened with interest to Margaret Hodge talking about everyone working together to defeat the Tories in 2017. Well, that's a laugh. Um, and the same, same is true of Tom Watson. And we're still waiting for the Ford inquiry in respect of the Erdogan scandal in regard to where monies were diverted to under Ian McNichol's stewardship. So, no, listen, Margaret Hodge is making a political stunt. She's obviously doing it because of the fact that there's a United General Secretary election. She opposes my candidature. She supports someone else in the race. And, and she should uh, be spending her time on her constituents and not engaging in such ridiculous political stunts. But you, you've just said there's nothing wrong with what was being suggested in those emails. There's one thing to support people to try and get your preferred candidates in, but to put the skids under, you're not putting them under Conservative candidates. You're putting them under, or you're considering putting them under, Labour candidates. Surely that is not the best use of your time or sticking together. No, Emma, this is entirely appropriate. Listen, there is a process in respect of selection. There is a trigger process that every MP is subject to in the Labour Party. It's completely within the entitlement of a CLP to say to a sitting MP, we don't want you anymore. We want someone else to represent our interests in Parliament. Otherwise, frankly, this is the reason why we get to a situation where we have MPs who are not representing so, so the interests of working think, class people. You, you think Margaret Hodge is going to the police because she doesn't want you to be in charge of the union. You genuinely think that's why she's doing it? Of course she is. She's got no other reason to go to the police. There's nothing unlawful. Well, she's in just listed all those reasons that she said in the yeah. film. Well, I'm not sure what she listed, Emma. I, you, you must have heard something said <laughs> that I didn't hear say, because what I heard from Margaret Hodge was we should all have been working to defeat the Tories in 2017. Well, she called and it we appalling. Been, she called it appalling, and, it... and she's concerned about third party payments and potential criminal activity. C can I just bring it on to, though? I suppose if you're watching at home. Emma, and you're that's not... language. That, uh, Emma, just, just as soon as I can just say, yes. because this is ridiculous language, and this is the BBC. There is no criminal activity in respect to this. If we wanted to engage someone to generate activism within the region, or if we wanted to ask a third party to sponsor someone to engage in political activity in a region, that is completely and utterly appropriate. And that is democracy in play. There's no criminal okay, activity. Let me... Margaret Hodge is making a political Stunt As here. you have said, and right, she, let me, and, let me and, come and back to you. And, just... and the hypocrisy, Emma, sorry, the hypocrisy of her making a political stunt whenever she undermined the efforts to get a social government in 2017 is risable. Howard, I'll come back to you in just a moment. Siobhan, to bring you in at this point. Uh, what? There's no, nothing wrong with this, according to Howard Beckett. Well, this is uh, what unions do. I would like to quote uh, from the uh, emails. From This is from Mr Price, who I, I don't think I've ever met. Money. No arrangements have been put in place to fund the work I am doing. At what point shall I start invoicing Unite via Thompson's, I assume? Is the man just a fantasist? Can I just say at this point, Thompson's uh, is the, the legal firm. We've got a statement from them that, that represent Unite, look after their interests. We're not aware of nor involved in any of the discussions. No knowledge or record of such payments being made by our firm. But carry on with your point. But just this, pers this man, Mr Price, is assuming that Thompson's is going to pay him from Unite. Now, he must have got this idea from somewhere. Or is he a fantasist? Howard, do you want to come back to that? Uh, Mr Price is making a suggestion. Uh, in 2017 no, or 2016... He's assuming, and that suggests, that this may be of a pattern of behaviour. And then he goes on, I think we, I think that's you, Mr Beckett, and him, I think we agreed you would arrange payment through Thompson's. I need a form of words to describe what I am not in well, brackets doing. That would seem Shibana. to suggest that there had been a con conversation and an agreement. And I am sure you would agree, Mr Beckett, that if this was true in any way at all and you were trying to hide payments paid for by a third party, that it would be against trade union law. 
Siobhan, I think you need to be extremely careful. I don't know you. I'm not sure what your experience is in respect of cross-examining someone, but I think on national television you should be extremely careful in regard to your language. Steve was making a suggestion that he wanted to be financially remunerated for activities that he was going to undertake in the region. It's completely legitimate for those activities to either be paid for by Unite or a third party. But I decided to go a different way, and it is simple as that. And your language and others' language in the, in the programme is simply, as I said before, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, given what went on in 2017. I don't know your experience, Siobhan, with the trade union movement, but I can tell you this in regard to the trade union movement. We do not back away from our principles, and we do not back away from saying it whenever you, Labour MPs well, Howard, are not reflecting think, those I'm principles. I'm sorry, Mr Mac, you can have whatever principles you like, but you only get to do what you do because your members pay their subs. And I think they pay their subs for you to represent them, to give them advice when they need it, and to help them train. I don't think they want to pay for you to organise in 59 constituencies, influence councillors' selections, remove councillors, remove MPs, and, on top of that, remove the General Secretary Secretary and somebody called John Stolliday. And I don't know if you know John Stolliday, but he is a Labour Party lifer. He's worked in the party his whole life. He's not stood for election. He's not gone for a major job. He's worked his way up. And when he was forced out of the Labour Party, there was a standing ovation from MB, every member of staff in the building. And he, this man seems to Emma, think that it's respond. absolutely legitimate Howard, to I get him sacked. Very, this, very briefly, it's, if you may. Well, 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 it's extraordinary that it should be brief. Well, this no, we've Siobhan, had a long, I, had a long say, to and fro, you and I, and I suppose as you just I a say, quick response, As I please. say, Siobhan, I don't know your relationship with the trade union movement, but let me just give you a little bit of history in respect of it. The Labour Party was set up by the trade so, union movement. Are we having set a bit up, of mansplaining? Set up to be... Is this mansplaining, Mr Beckett? I have been Siobhan, in the Labour Party just, 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 just for 40 years. I have been an MP for Siobhan 23 be years. And I have been a member be the of the GMB for and 30 Siobhan, years. Whenever, so I really I, don't need I, I, you I, I, to I, I, think, to me about history. I, we, we are at time for this particular discussion. Perhaps you two will talk again. You are both part I of the Labour... I don't very much, Emma, that we'll talk again. You are both part... Siobhan, frankly, is in the wrong party. I well, I was going to say, he simply does not understand the role of the trade unions in the trade both, union party, and that's that's very well, you're, sad. But you're both meant to be. Hey, man, you, you're both meant to be in the same party, and I think for those watching at home, uh, that that is quite striking. Thank you to Howard Beckett, Siobhan McDonough.